My name is Melody Siadati. I'm a PhD student at Simon Fraser University and a research assistant at Atbaska University. Uh, I'm going to present our design briefing, which is about LearnBe. It's a tool uh, for social, uh, it's a social analytics enabled tool for, uh, to support self-regulated learning at workplace. This is an outline uh, of my talk, what we will be talking about. So I will first start with the research challenge. Uh, why at all we have started this research? Well, the main purpose and the main objective of this research is to support organizationally embedded personal learning at workplace. And why do we consider it as a research challenge? First of all, learning at workplace has uh, faces many different challenges. Some of them are uh, similar to challenges w that we face when supporting learning in educational settings. Some of them are really different. Uh, the main important ones are that learning at workplace is informal, uh, it's autonomous, and this requires learners to have self-regulatory uh, capabilities. Secondly, workplace learning is contextual. Most of the time it's on demand. Learner, uh, workers uh, start their learning process when they need to learn something, when they face some problems uh, regarding a project or a task that they are responsible for. And these come from the learning objectives or the goals of their organization, the business plan or the principles or whatever that the organization is pursuing. So this uh, conveys the harmonization of individual and organizational learning goals. Uh, last, not least, workplace learning has a social context. It's not that learning happens in isolation, no. Uh, learners, employees work together, they, they have colleagues, they work in teams, they work in projects together on, on a task, on a project. They are responsible for uh, group uh, tasks. And that would mean that a learner has to align with colleagues' goals and activities as well. So uh, all of this being said, uh, we have a pedagogical framework underlying our research. It's based on uh, the knowledge binding model by Nonako. Many of you might be familiar with this uh, model. It's very famous. It's been in use since uh, 1995. It mainly addresses the organizational learning and uh, how the knowledge uh, moves in, in, an org or in an organization from within a, an individual head until to the uh, moment that it becomes public and it bec uh, the learner decides to actually share it with his colleagues. We have used this model, but to address the challenges that I just mentioned in the previous slide, we have extended this model with self-regulatory learning practices to support the concept of aligning, aligning to one's learning goals with the social embeddedness of workplace learning to allow for a learner to align their learning goals with that of uh, other members of the organization and with the, with the notion of organizational context because workplace learning most of all is uh, contextual. So it, it would allow for a harmonization of or, uh, individual goals with that of organizational goals. Uh, so LearnBe, the tool that we want to introduce in this design briefing. Learn this stands for learning biases, and biases means uh, learning as a way of life. So we are this tool, we are promoting learning as a way of life. So how we can support learning in, in the daily work activities of uh, learners at their workplace. It's a tool to support self-regulatory practices in intentional and non-formal learning in organizational context. And there are many technical challenges here, for example, uh, the most obvious one being that learners and users use many diverse tools. They do their activities in different environments uh, and to trace and track these activities to collect them all together and, put a mean, uh, and give a meaning to them and share it, give a, give a shared meaning to it and share it within the organization, uh, we have to use some structure. And for that, we make use of ontologies and data linking, uh, sorry, make use of ontologies for data linking and annotation. Uh, many different features are available in LearnBe. Uh, some of them I'm uh, introducing here. 
Uh, a first group of features are the contextual recommendations, whether these can be con uh, recommendations of competences. Competences here uh, represent the organizational goals, what, what that matters to the organization and the organization wants its employees to have or to achieve. And uh, to achieve those competences, we also, uh, the tool also allows for re uh, contextual recommendation of learning paths, learning activities that could be done within those paths and the knowledge objects that users can use to uh, perform those activities. This set of features uh, support the harmonization aspect of uh, workplace learning. The second set of features, uh, they support the social embeddedness of workplace learning, uh, one of them being the knowledge sharing profiles. I'm gonna talk about them a bit later. The other one is a more analytics-based feature. It's the provision of usage information, how the collective, how the social context of the organization has been using the resources available. And the last one is the social wave. It uh, gives inf updates and information about the resources to the users. I'm gonna uh, talk about all these features uh, uh, in the next slides. And the last set of features are the ones that actually address the individual learning aspect of workplace learning. They more support, uh, they are more oriented towards supporting the self-regulatory aspects. And they are the progress meters and activity streams which uh, allow the learner to know how they are progressing toward achieving their learning goals and be aware of different activities that they are doing and how they relate to their different goals and competences included in those goals. So uh, today we, and the main subject of the conference, of course, is learning analytics. How we consider learning analytics can be beneficial in workplace uh, settings in particular. So we believe that learning analytics can uh, help, can be beneficial to users in every step of their self-regulated learning processes at workplace. For example, it can help them to identify their learning needs and uh, set their learning goals. Also, they can get aware how other employees with similar organizational positions, for example, those who are working on the same projects who, who, or who are responsible for the same type of tasks, how they have defined their learning goals. It helps users to monitor, uh, to monitor their learning progress, also to compare their progress with that of their colleagues. It also helps users to share and document their learning experiences, and not only uh, share it with their colleagues, also see how actively their colleagues are sharing their learning experiences. Also, we uh, just talked how learning analytics is beneficial to an individual, but also it's uh, uh, beneficial to the organizational learning. It supports the harmonization of individual and organizational learning goals. It enables the organization to better know what uh, its employees are working on, how they are defining their learning goals, how they are approaching their learning goals, what learning paths they are creating, they are following to achieve those. So it just gives the, the organization this big picture, what the, uh, its uh, structure, what the, its employees are working on. Furthermore, it en enhances the motivation of individuals to take part in sharing activities by letting them know how other people have been making use of their shared uh, learning experiences. For example, if someone knows that their shared document or their shared comment on something has helped someone else to follow that path or uh, better achieve a competence, it would perhaps motivate them to further participate in sharing activities. So, uh, as I just said, LearnBee has many features. In this talk, we just uh, focus on the learning analytics features, those features that in particular support learning analytics. The first one is the one that provides users with some sort of usage information. And by, by that, we mean that it uh, represents how the collective, how the social uh, context of the organization thinks, works, or treats a certain resource and this way the user can better make a decision whether to use that resource, whether to choose that competence, to choose that learning path or not. Uh, this feature comes in different forms. It comes as a statistics, social wave, or it comes in the form of the collective stand. Statistics, uh, statistics and social wave are implemented as a set of uh, various visualization charts. And the collective stand is implemented in terms of the keywords, the comments, the tags, and the ratings that users leave for a certain resource. 
So for example, this is the screenshot of the main page of the Learn, Learn B tool. Um, we, you can come for demo of the tool in the afternoon. I'm just gonna briefly show how it, uh, the, this usage information look like. For example, uh, consider this is a duty that someone wants to, uh, someone is responsible for and the organ organization thinks that there are three competences that are required for this specific duty which is ontology development. And the user can see different sort of uh, analytics available for this specific duty. For example, they can see that among these different competences that the user has to achieve to be uh, fully uh, prepared for this duty. Uh, the first one has been five times added by other people to their learning goals. It has been three times commented on and one person has, uh, has uh, selected it as their favorite competence and also the other one. So they can uh, make this decision which competence to start from and which one to choose. Well, for example, consider that they, they wanted to start with this one. They can also see more information from the uh, collective context of their organization. They can see how many other people are working on this competence, how many people have this competence overdue. They are passed over the deadline that they have set that they want to achieve this competence, but they have not yet, and how many people are actively working on it. Furthermore, they can uh, see how many, among these people who have this competence overdue, what are the organizational positions of them? So for example, in the context of this uh, university, two of them have been teaching assistants, one of them is a senior programmer. So they can get this big picture that who are the people working on this competence? Is this easy for them? Are they achieving it? Are, are they achieving in time, in, uh, during the deadline that they have defined for it, etc. Another form of usage information is the social wave. Uh, consider that a person has included this competence in their learning goal, and now they can easily follow this competence and see what other people are doing with this competence. For example, this social wave, as you can see, is related to the competence. It can see how other people have added this to their learning goal, how they have added different learning paths for it, if they are uh, making any updates to it, they are adding new resources for it and how they are actually working around it. In addition to learning resources, people can also follow other people like any other social environment and see what other people are doing. Uh, the other f uh, uh, analytics feature uh, is the progressometers. So progressometers can both uh, can uh, help users both at individual and the collective levels. At the individual level, level, it helps people to see how they are achieving their defined learning goals and the competences included in those goals. At the collective level, they can also, okay, I'm way over time. <laughs> they can compare it with uh, how other people are progressing toward their learning goals. So for example, in this learning path, the person can see since the date at the time that they define their learning path, how they have been uh, progressing toward achieving the uh, learning, completing the learning path and how other people with different organizational positions have been uh, progressing. Knowledge sharing profiles also uh, support users at individual and also at the collective level. So they can see users, how they have been sharing their learning resources and also compare it with other people, the average of sharing activities of other people within their organization. So for example, I can see that I have been very good at sharing, almost very good at sharing my learning paths, not so good at sharing of my learning activities and so on. Last but not least are the uh, motivational messages. These are meant to help users see how other people are opening up their learner models, how they are opening up their per uh, personal preferences, and these personal preferences are actually used for those contextual recommendations. So for example, a user can see, uh, can set at their profile that how they want different personal preferences to be used when the system is giving them a recommendation. And these motivational messages just show them and how other people have, you know, just set these, uh, these uh, properties of their learner model and those helping the system to giving them a better and more accurate recommendation. So as uh, I described, the main research challenge is to, we want to see if and to what extent the analytics features in particular 
Along with other features of LearnB, address the challenges to support workplace learning. Our further development would uh, include that implementation of features that help with documenting and sharing learning experiences and also support for collaborative learning. And at the moment, we have collected the results of, an, uh, of um, the LearnB being used in three different workplace settings. Uh, users have been using it in, uh, in a two month period. We are uh, analyzing this data and uh, the issues that we identify in this process will definitely help us with our uh, further research. Thank you very much and please join us for a demo of LearnB in this evening's reception. Thank you. Hi, thanks for your talk. Can you hear me? I do. Um, so one thing that I think is really important for all of us to do in our work when we're talking about using the learning analytics to support the learning process is to connect how these analytical measures or visualizations we're developing connect to our model of learning. And you talked at the beginning about using Nanaka's sort of knowledge creation model mm -hmm. and two aspects of that that I'm interested in how your learning analytics would support are the fact that that model talks a lot about the relationships and the translation between tacit and explicit mm -hmm. aspects of knowledge as something that's very non-trivial. And I saw a lot about explicit aspects of knowledge here, but less on the tacit. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece is that's focused very much on the notion of collective creation of knowledge. And I was wondering how that's sort of being served and supported by these analytics. Um, very good question. Uh, well, as I talked about the model. It's not explicitly the Nonakas model. We have extended the model. Maybe we, I can say that the SRL support that we have added, self-regulatory support that we have added to the model, more addresses the tacit knowledge, how the users uh, actually um, conduct their learning processes. And for each of these processes, we have defined a set of indicators. So for example, for planning, like when the user wants to plan their learning goals, we have defined a set of indicators. And each of the functionalities of these visualizations are mapped to one of those indicators. So when we are actually running our evaluations and like, or just asking users questions in questionnaires, we can see how each of the you know, implemented functionalities has supported the indicators of one of the phases of SRL practices. I don't know if I answered your question. I hope, kind of. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can talk later. Okay. <laughs>